This is an old propane tank that I've been given. The plan is to convert this to an auxiliary air cylinder to add some volume to the compressed air system in my workshop. Now, I've seen a few people do this, but they all seem to make the same fundamental mistake, and that's keeping the tank this way up. I started by removing the protective shroud so that I could get in to access the valve. Before trying to remove the valve, I opened it up and vented any pressure left in the tank. I then closed it and gave the area a good clean up with a wire brush so I could see the threads and decide whether it was a right or a left hand thread. The reason for adding the auxiliary air tank is that when I'm using certain air tools that consume a lot of air, it just simply means that the compressor doesn't have to run as often. It turned out that the bottle thread is just a standard right hand thread, so lefty loosey, righty tighty. Now just because we've vented the bottle and taken the valve out, doesn't mean that the bottle is empty. Propane is denser than air, so it will sink. So if we just stand the bottle up, it's still going to have propane in the bottom of it. So the easiest thing to do is stick the hose pipe in and fill it with water, because water is denser than propane. If you look really carefully, you can see the vapour coming out and distorting the lettering on that piece of paper. Once it's full of water, then all of the propane has been displaced. With that done, I put the shroud back on and then flipped it upside down and let all the water run out. I want to retain and use the original valve body, but it needs a few modifications first. These propane valves are far too restrictive, so the whole thing needs taking to bits and modifying internally. The top cap is fitted with a left hand thread, so righty loosey, lefty tighty. That just doesn't have the same ring to it, does it? Inside there is a little plastic diaphragm, that can just be flicked out of the way with a scriber. Now, I want to retain the original top cap that screws in here, but that little hole just there where the gas comes from the tank is far too small, it's going to cause a big restriction in the system. So let's go and get that set up in the milling machine, and see if we can open it out. The valve body is made of some sort of bronze, which is notorious for grabbing hold of drill bits. It gets very hot very fast, and then just snatches at your drill bit. So what I'm doing is I'm peck drilling, which is the moving the drill bit in and out all the time to help keep it cool and clear away the chips. I got rid of the valve handle, as I'm not going to need that, then stripped the rest of the valve, kept what I need, and gave it a bit of a clean. With all the pieces cleaned, I gave the threads a liberal coating of flux, and reassembled them. The idea here is that the valve body and adjuster are just going to screw back together and basically act as blanks to block off that exit of the valve body. This is just going to turn the valve body into a basic 90 degree elbow out of the tank. Another clean with the wire wheel and a bit of PTFE tape on the threads and into the bottle it goes. Since I'm going to be mounting the tank upside down, I'm going to need some legs, and for that I just found a few bits of old angle iron. Now, as for why the tank is mounted upside down, that's a little bit more interesting. When the compressor's running, it's sucking in the air, and that air contains moisture. It compresses that moisture and then puts it into the system. Now, if the tank has got the hole at the top, all of that moisture laden air ends up in the tank and the water, which is heavier than the air, settles out at the bottom of the tank. Now if the hole's at the top, that moisture can never get out, so over time you end up with a tank full of water, which is bad for your steel tank, it's going to go rusty in there. So if you put the hole at the bottom, i.e. gas bottle goes upside down, then that water can escape. And then you end up with a nice dry tank and nice dry air, and your tank doesn't go rusty. Now, there is of course a way around that, and that's to drill a hole and weld a boss onto the bottom of the tank and fit a drain valve, but if you're not a very good welder, that's really not a very good idea. The leg is going to fit something like this. I'm going to weld it at the bottom, here and here, and then where this little tab is, and this hole, 
there's going to be a piece of bar that goes between the leg and the tab. I cleaned up the tab and the area at the base of the tank where I'm going to weld on the legs just to make sure that I get a nice clean weld. You'll notice that I'm not welding directly to the pressure vessel itself, I'm welding to these ancillary pieces that are attached to it. That's so that I don't compromise the integrity of the tank itself. This seems like an ideal opportunity to get the stick welder out. I don't use it very often so I could do with a bit of practice. I just got everything tacked in place first and then I could put it up on the bench to weld it properly. After a quick coat of workshop blue, it's starting to take shape. Now I need to connect this tank up to the rest of the air system and the propane tank has got a slightly unusual thread on its outlet. So I've got this regulator here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it off so that I can use this little piece and then solder in a piece of 15mm copper pipe then I can use standard soldering and compression fittings to connect the system together. The old hacksaw soon dispatched the end off the old regulator. I'm going to need both of these pieces, but this piece needs opening out to accept the 15mm copper pipe. It's got a small valve in the end which needs to be disassembled. It's a bit fiddly, but there's an o-ring and a snap ring that come off first. Then there's another o-ring down inside it that needs prying out before you can actually take the internal part of the valve out. We don't need that bit. So you can see here that the hole in the centre is far too small. So we'll pop this in the lathe and get it opened out. I'm using the collet chuck here because I'm going to end up with a very thin wall thickness when I'm done and I don't want to risk crushing the part. This is bronze again, so very careful with the drilling. I started with a 12 and then finished with a 15. For doing the pipe work, I just used some 15mm copper pipe, which is easily cut with a plumber's cutter. I then popped it in the lathe, cleaned it up with some scotch bright, put a little bit of flux on where I was going to make my solder joint. I could then tap on the piece that I'd just drilled out. And here it is soldered onto the end of the pipe with the threaded nut. For mounting the new pipework, I drilled some 4.2mm holes and then tapped them M5 into the bits of angle that I was using for the legs. I then used M5 countersunk screws to secure standard plastic 15mm plumbing clips to the frame. So I've cut all the additional pipe work and I've just got it all in place in a sort of test fit. I'll get it all soldered together in a minute, but I wanted to do a test fit first just in case. I've also added a regulator at the top so that I can control the pressure of the air that's getting fed to the workshop. To keep everything lined up while I'm soldering, I set up this little jig. The clamp on the left hand side stops all the pipe work from rotating. Then the magnetic welding clamp on the right hand side just adds some preload to the ends of the pipes to stop everything coming apart. With the joints cleaned up I gave all the pipe work a good polish with some autosol. Right, let's start putting this together shall we? First up is the 15mm adapter that screws into the old valve body. It's a left hand thread because it's a propane fitting. Then there's a half inch BSP gas valve which is the tank isolation valve. You see the pipe that hangs down in the bottom left? That's going to be the drain pipe to let out any moisture that gets caught in the system. There's a little valve that goes on the end of that pipe as well. The open-ended copper pipe above the isolation valve will be the inlet from the main compressor. 
At the top of the tank, the regulator attaches to the copper pipe just using a regular compression fitting. It's then secured in place with a U-bolt to what was the rim at the bottom of the tank. The compressor lives by the garage door and this tank should fit nicely in the corner. By keeping it here I can feed an airline to the workshop for air tools or out onto the drive if I need to blow up tyres for the cars. The compressor just connects to the inlet pipe just here. When the compressor is running, if this valve is closed like it is now, then the air just goes up to the regulator and any water drops down to the drain valve. If this valve's open, like now, then the air comes in, goes down here, around and fills up the tank. So we get air in the compressor and the big tank and water still drops down to the bottom. To prevent any unfortunate accidents by pulling on the end of the airline and pulling the tank over, I put some P-clips on the airline securing the first couple of feet to the wall. With everything connected together, I charged up the compressor and filled up the tank to check for leaks. I just used a paintbrush with some water with a little bit of washing up soap in it, and when you see a bubble, you've got a leak. Thankfully all the solder joints were good, and it was just a case of tightening up a few compression fittings. Well, I suppose I ought to take this opportunity to clean the milling machine. If you're new here, then consider hitting that subscribe button, give the video a like, a share, etc. Drop us a comment, let me know what you think. And if you're one of the regulars, then thanks for watching, thank you for the continued support, and I'll see you next time.